uh, he kind of like loaded up, stayed really low. And, and that's kind of the style that he, that he plays. And it's, it was, is interesting if he did a good job uh, countering some of the grappling exchanges and getting away from some leg locks. And uh, I, I felt like he did everything in there for the most part that I would have expected, you know, and uh, it was a great fight and uh, it was the easily, easily my toughest test yet. So yeah, good stuff. Man, you were relentless with the takedowns. Once you got it to the ground, you were able to dominate positionally. Matsushima, though, was really there with you with the, with the um, defense. Were you surprised at all that you weren't able to submit him in the first round? You got him real deep with the rear naked choke. Yeah, I was real close with the first uh, submission attempt. Uh, there was at one point in time where I, I had the hand almost locked in behind the – because the, the hard thing about the gloves is, like uh, – that second hand that comes through behind the head that you normally yeah. can easily get through in jujitsu. So you have the one arm around the neck and then this one in jujitsu for the most part, if this, this comes across the shoulder, I mean, this slides right behind the back of the head uh, with the gloves on, you have extra padding here plus the extra padding on the opposite glove. So as you go to try to squeeze this behind somebody's head, it's kind of tough. That's why often you see like finishes where guys kind of like have the top of the head, but anybody that's experienced like Matsushima, like as soon as your hand slides to the top of the head, they just grab that hand and pull it down over your, over your face. So he did a great job uh, with hand control. It's a tough thing. Um, you know, he did everything that he needed to do to not get submitted in those situations. And, uh, I, I felt like I probably, there's certain things that maybe I could have done better, or maybe I could have, uh, I could have switched a little earlier to deciding to mount him like I did towards the end of the round, um, you know, to do some damage instead of just being on the back, um, mm -hmm. you know, but uh, again, still felt like I dominated, still felt like I had him under, under a lot of stress and, and threat. Um, but as far as like, you know, how he managed to defend the mission attempts, he did a great job. I don't think uh, surprise to me is the wrong word. Cause I thought he was going to be a very tough opponent. I, I didn't like, I didn't look at this fight thinking this is going to be some easy challenge and this guy wasn't good or anything like that. Like he looked like a really challenging, knowledgeable opponent. So uh, I, this is kind of what I expected. I expected a tough, hard fight. In the second round, Matsushima came up. Well, most of the beginnings of the round, he was able to use that movement and stay outside that karate movement that we were talking about, keeping that good range. But in the second round, once you got him down, you were able to get into that, the backpack position, trapped his, one of his arms with your hooks. How confident were you that you were going to finish that one when you got to that position? Uh, it's, it's tricky again. So when, once I trap the arm, it, it makes it so that it's a little easier for me to access the neck. Right. But the problem with trapping the arm is that it immediately makes it so that my level is a little bit higher than my opponent's level. Yeah. So when I go to try to finish the strangle in certain ways, it's a little harder for me to <laughs> thank you. It's a little harder for me to finish the strangle because his, his body is a little lower than mine. So when I go to lock, it just doesn't quite fit in correctly. Uh, the upside to that is if he pushes himself down low enough, Enough, I can go into back triangle sequences. Uh, in MMA, it's a little tricky. You know, it's a little bit more slippery. So I was a little bit nervous to go transition to back triangles, thinking that he'd do a quick, you know, twist and turn and maybe slip out. Uh, so I didn't really try to force him down. I was hoping maybe he'd bridge into me and I could I could switch back to the rear naked choke. Um, he kind of played in that middle territory. He never pushed himself too far down. Never really bridged far enough up where I could go to grab the rear naked. So, uh, you know failure on my part, maybe to, to switch things up into different submission holds. But, you know, at, at the end of the day too, this is a fight and, you know, I got to do what I got to do to try to make sure that I maintain control of the guy and, and make sure that I win this fight. So, uh, I'm, I'm not really disappointed in, in my performance there. Um, but yeah, it was, uh, when I had the arm trapped, it definitely, it makes it easier in some ways and harder in some ways, anybody that's played in that position, they would kind of know what I'm talking about. Absolutely. This one here is from fight game Asia. This question What's the biggest takeaway in case you do meet Tom Lee next? Uh, biggest takeaways don't get knee in my nose. Uh, that, <laughs> that's anybody that's out there thinking like, yeah, getting knee in their nose feels like it would be a good time. I'm just here to let you know that's, that's not true. That would suck. Uh, I've experienced it. It's not good. Uh, <laughs> no, uh, as far as takeaways for the next fight, man, you know, you know what the, the biggest thing is just like, I'm so happy that I got that fight in before I got to fight for the title. To be honest, uh, I'm happy that uh, I'm happy that I got another, uh, another buffer between uh, me and the title. I'm glad that, you know, I, I got to have this fight so that I could get used to being back in the cage. So it's not that I necessarily, um, it's not that I necessarily experienced something in this fight that I'm like, Oh man, I really got to, be careful like next fight or anything like that. It's, it's more just like, Oh, all right. That's what it feels like to fight with four ounce gloves again and have somebody need me in the face while I'm on the ground, which is, you know, legal in this, in this organization and stuff. And like, just, just being ready for all that and, and, and 
experiencing it. It's just different than sparring it the same way that anything would be like just doing the actual thing, experiencing that live opponent. That's really trying to hurt you. Um, I needed, I needed that again. So I'm, I'm just glad that I got that before I got that title run. Um, he Don Lee's a very different opponent. He does have a little bit of a karate style, but the, the, the way he uses is very different. The type of combinations that he puts together is very different. He's a very different fighter. He's a little bit, I feel like a little bit sharper. Um, so it's a different challenge, but I, I do, do think that, you know, uh, if, if uh, I do think that if Matsushima is any reflection of, you know, what it would be like to be in there with Don Lee, that I, I have some pretty good chances because I did very, very well in this fight against uh, Matsushima. So this is a follow up question from Fight Game Asia. Matsushima hit you with some good shots in there. You got caught a few times. Did he hurt you at all in the fight enough to cause alarm? <laughs> yeah, for sure. Uh, I definitely didn't like getting kneed in the nose. That sucked. Uh, I think it happened twice. I think I got two, two really good knees to the face and, uh, both of those sucked, made, made my nose even bigger and fatter than it already normally is. Um, yeah, I, I mean, those are, those are hard shots. I definitely got, you know, I was shook up from that. Those are probably in the actual cage, probably as hard as I've ever got hit. Like during sparring, there's been a couple of times where I've probably got hit harder than that, but, um, like in the actual cage, I was, that was just about as bad I've ever, as I've ever gotten hit. Um, they were, they were kind of just solo shots though. It's not like I got, you know, teed off on for a whole round or anything like that. I still feel like I pretty much outstruck him for most of the fight anyway. Uh, but again, uh, you know, you know, kudos to him. Those were tough shots and, uh, you know, he landed them well and he did what he needed to do. He was, he was sharp. He was ready to go when I made my, when I made my mistakes or when I paused or whenever I wasn't doing what when I wasn't doing what I was supposed to be doing, he was right on top of me, right, ready to go, ready to do damage. And, you know, he's a great fighter. He did, he did his work, did a great job. Man, it was a great, great, great matchup. Both of you did amazing. This question from John Brannigan. What does an ideal 2021 look like for Gary Tonin's MMA career? Oh man, ideal 2021 would be like uh, winning both belts, getting the 55 pound and 70 pound title. So featherweight and lightweight uh, title, that would be amazing. I don't know if that's possible within this year, you know, depending upon how, what uh, one championship has, you know, in store or how often we're going to be able to fight depending upon how, you know, the Corona regulations go. Um, but I mean, that would be cool. Uh, it all depends, you know, it depends on, on that depends on, you know, the, my, the health of my body too. You never know injuries and things like that, but, uh, that's what I would love to be able to do at the bare minimum. I want one title, you know, uh, by the end of this year, uh, I think I can make that happen pretty easily, but if I can find a way to make two happen, I mean, that would be, that would be a beautiful thing. So, you know, one step at a time, you know, we're coming for that featherweight belt first, but, uh, you know, we'd love to make that jump back up to, uh, to lightweight challenge or, um, and challenge uh, whoever happens to have, have the title at that point. This question is from Conan Altatis. Between Tan Lee and Christian, who would you like to fight first? Oh, <laughs> well, uh, I mean, I think it's – hmm, Christian, I'm assuming you're talking about Christian Lee, correct? Christian Lee. Christian yeah, Lee. yeah, okay, just being sure because he just said Tan Lee and Christian. I, I don't know. I, not that I know that any, any other Christians in the division. I don't but, blame you. You, you just came out of a three round bout, man. That's my bad. <laughs> no, no, it's cool. Um, so anyway, uh, as far as who I'd like to fight first, well, I just think it makes more sense considering most of my fights have been in the featherweight division to fight for the featherweight fight title and have that fight first. Um, I, it would be a weird jump to just go from being in a, a contender for the featherweight belt and then just jump right up to fighting for the lightweight belt mm -hmm. that would be an odd jump in my opinion uh if they gave me that opportunity for whatever reason i don't know why it doesn't seem to make logical sense to me but if they gave me that opportunity i would take it i mean it's a shot at the title i mean i'd, I'd go for it um is it what the sequence of events that i see in my mind no i, I see tom lee first i think that makes the most sense i mean that's my actual weight division a little um, clarification but, here sorry christian is the number two ranked featherweight Yes, he is, but he's fighting in light, he's fighting at lightweight right now. So that's right, what so I'm assuming that question was at featherweight. Oh, in okay. Uh, <laughs> I I don't see this is okay. So again, in terms of logic, just in, in my head, I don't. I, so I, I see where you, I see where you're coming it, at. It, but this fine. question was thrown it's, up. It's okay. It's a it's a reasonable question. I'm just saying, in terms of logic, uh, I doubt that Christian Lee would come off of he because he's a current title holder at 70 uh or or uh, lightweight so i doubt that he would come down to featherweight to fight me before i have the title i could see him doing it after i won the title or something because mm -hmm. then it's you know he's he's a title holder that's fighting for another title it's rare that you see someone who is 
it's rare that you see someone who's a title holder in one division, but not a title holder in another, jump down to that, that division and fight someone who's not currently holding the title. Usually you would have that him, like his next a fight. Champion versus champion. Super exactly. Fight. You could see him fighting Don Lee maybe, but the likelihood that he's going to fight me first. I mean, dude, again, if they, if they give me a chance at that fight, I mean, I, I guess you take it because he's a title holder. Like, why not? But uh, yeah, I'd love that fight. But uh, I just, I don't think it's going to happen. But I, I, I think pre- preference is Don Lee first because he's the title holder. Uh, but whatever title shot anybody's willing to give me, that's what I'm looking for right now. Where, <laughs> 45, 55, whatever it is. I, okay. yeah. Go ahead, go ahead. Go ahead, that's fine. Couple questions here from Fight Game Asia. Do you feel like you need to mix in a bit more ground and pound or actively hunt for striking on the ground as opposed to continually looking for the submission? That's a good question. Um, and I, I thought about it after my performance as well. Even during the performance, I was thinking about it. You know, I'm on the guy's back and he's holding on to the gloves. And I'm like, eh, you know, I'm spending some time here trying to look for the strangle. Maybe I should just do some damage. And you kind of saw me think about it a little bit at one point. I just, I like kind of came up to the mounted position to start to throw some elbows. And then he just turned his back again. And I was like, eh, well, may as well just strangle him. Uh, I think it could have helped me either. It could have helped me in two multiple ways. One, it could have helped me do more damage. Two, it could have helped open up the submission a little bit more by me maybe turning him over and starting to throw some strikes first. But at the same time, you never know. Like maybe me doing that would have allowed him to slip out and, and who knows what would have happened there during the rest of the round. So it's really hard to say. Um, would it would have it been more action during the fight? Probably. You know, uh, maybe it would have le- led to a more exciting fight for the fans. I'll have to go back, look at the tape, see what I think. But uh, ultimately, uh, you know, I went out there to win that fight. I won the fight and, you know, I'm happy about it. Question again, Fight Game Asia. As a grappler, you're used to competing in gi or in rash guards. Did the sweat build up late in the fight affect your submission game at all? Did it make it difficult for you to land your takedowns and your submissions later? Yeah, it always does. It always does. Honestly, I felt like uh, I didn't feel like it played a huge role in this fight. I didn't feel uh, I didn't feel like my opponent was super slippery. I've had opponents not in not in one championship particularly, but I've had opponents in grappling matches before that I felt like were greased and things like that. Uh, where I tried to get a hold of them and I really felt like it, they were exceptionally slippery and it was very difficult to hold on to them. I, I didn't really feel that a lot in this fight. Just, you know, he just employed decent defense and, you know, did what he needed to do. But uh, I didn't feel like there was a lot of periods of time where I tried to grab a hold of them and like slippage was a major issue. It, it does change things though. I'll tell you from just like overall perspective, just not speaking specifically about this fight. But just from an overall perspective, when you're grappling without a shirt on, it, it makes a huge difference. You can even look statistically at matches when two guys have uh, two guys don't have shirts on in a grappling match. There's far less submissions that happen. Um, so it's it's definitely a game changer. Uh, it's a part of mixed martial arts that so you got to get used to. And and towards the end of my fight camps, we we do like uh, sparring and stuff like that with with no shirt just to simulate it and get used to it. It is it's definitely a part of it. But uh, I didn't feel like it was a, it played a huge role in this particular fight. Now you spoke a little bit about being critical about going to the striking before looking for the submission. This question here from Brian Yellow. Which part of the fight surprised you about Matsushima being out for so long? What areas do you think you have to work on more besides the striking on the ground for the next fight? Interesting. What do I need to work on more? Uh, hmm. Man, I... I... <laughs> it's not like there's anything particular in this fight that I look at and I'm like, Oh man, you know, I really screwed that up. I need to do something different there. Um, I don't like, I didn't feel like that. I made like crazy major mistake. I'll have to go back and like really, really look at it to to tell you for sure. I mean, it's, it's one thing being in the middle of the fight. It's hard to like, it's hard to, to get the full picture of exactly what happened because you're in it at the moment. Right. Um, so this might be a question that I'll better answer after I've watched the tape of me fighting to really be able to tell you for sure. Um, hmm, I think the, the one place where I think maybe I could have done a little better. I had one, I had one uh, leg entanglement situation where I, sorry, the third round. Yeah. I had one leg entanglement situation where I probably could have followed up immediately after the leg entanglement situation and like either got on top or took the back or something. And I kind of like laid there. I probably, probably could have chained that submission together with something a little bit better. Um, I co- probably could have had a better answer at the be- very beginning of the fight when I had the uh, initial guillotine as well. 
I think there was an opportunity there where he postured up. I, I did, I had, I was a little puzzled in my mind as to where I should go with that as to whether or not I should continue to try to finish the guillotine and bring him to the ground that way, or try to like move to the back. And I opted to kind of try to move to the back and didn't really do it well. So maybe those are the two things that are sticking out to me right now as like kind of problems. Other than that, I, man, I felt, I felt pretty good, man. Overall felt pretty good. Man, as a spectator, I was really impressed with your um, third round. You had to stand up a little bit with um, Matsushima and you showcased a lot of good movement, lateral movement on the back foot. You hit him with some counters as well. Were you happy with your stand up? Were you more comfortable? Yeah. Him, if you like? Yeah, I felt really good. Like, uh, what that kind of showed me and, or I guess told me about myself is like, Hey man, you know, if you want to spend a round in, in a standing position and, and tag somebody as they're trying to come forward, you can do it. You know, I kind of played the third round similar to the way he was trying to play the rest of the rounds. Uh, he was, he was doing a lot of countering. Like most yeah. of his, it seemed like most of his game plan is like, all right, I'm going to wait for him to come forward. And I'm going to try to really trying to draw you in. It seemed like, yeah. So third round, I did the same thing to him and I was very effective at it. Every time he came forward, I was tagging him with different shots and it showed me that I'm capable of doing that which is it's kind of a cool thing because i think it shows a lot of my of my development you know i mean it might not have been as exciting as people maybe wanted it to be me getting a finish in the third round or anything like that but um i think it i think it tells a lot about uh you know how i'm developing as a fighter and, and that i just have these different skills because guys most most fighters do not have an ability to fight in different distances um most fighters are good at kind of like one of those things i mean so the greats, I would say like the greatest fighters probably have, have those bases covered a little bit better. Uh, but often when you look at, at, uh, at good fighters, not great, you'll see a guy is really good at the distance. And like, as long as he's able to maintain that distance, he's awesome. But the moment somebody closes the distance is a big problem. Or you'll see somebody that's really, really good at closing distance. And when they close the distance, they're great. But at a distance, they're in danger, right? And uh, I think that I showed during this fight that I'm capable of doing both of those things. I'm capable of closing the distance and doing really well, obviously, in my grappling exchanges. And I'm also capable of keeping distance, keeping a guy away from me and tagging him with shots as he tries to come forward. And being able to fight moving backwards and moving forwards is a really, really important skill to be great at fighting, I think. And uh, to, to show that this early in my career, I think, is a good thing. And speaking about that, one of the greatest to do that, great in all distances, Demetrius Johnson, who's also in the one championship, Absolute gold, being effective in all those distances, right? Yes. Question here: Who's the toughest submission grappler you faced in your career that you could that you think you could do well against in MMA? Okay, who's the tough? Okay, toughest submission grappler I faced in my career that I believe I'd be able to beat in MMA. Oh, all right. So uh, there's a couple guys I can think of that uh, that stick out that are are currently fighting in MMA. Uh, that I think, uh, that I think I would do very well with, uh, Crone, uh, or well, sorry, I've beat them. Right. You said, yep. Somebody I've beat before. Um, okay. So I was uh, going to not was, just beat like somebody you competed against that you think you could do okay. well yet. Cool. Cause I was about to name Crone, but technically Crone beat me. So <laughs> in the grappling match, but I believe in an MMA fight, I'd be able to beat him. Uh, so Crone Gracie is one of them that, I, that sticks out to me. Um, I recently fought Davi uh, or grappled, sorry, Davi Ramos. I believe I'd be able to beat him in MMA as well. Um, trying to think some other guys, uh, Dylan Dennis, uh, AJ Agazarum. There's a bunch of guys out there that are fighting now that had grappling careers that I, I believe I'd be able to, I think as far as up and coming grapplers in MMA are concerned right now, uh, I think I'd be able to beat pretty much anybody, uh, that I've grappled against in my career in a mixed martial arts contest. Uh, I'm trying to think if there's another one, uh, Oh, Gilbert Burns is probably the most, I would say he's the most famous one that I've, uh, that I've competed against in, in a jiu-jitsu match, uh, man, that would probably be a really tough MMA fight, but I believe I yeah. could, I believe I could beat him. Uh, cause he's very explosive. He hits really mm -hmm. hard. So that would be like a really tough fight, but, uh, I believe I could, I could beat him there as well. It's hard, man. You know, these guys are in different organizations. I, I hate making call outs to like guys that are in different organizations. Cause it's like, you know, it's probably not going to happen. And then it's like, you know, all right, I'm talking shit, but like, you know, you can't really make it happen. So, um, you know, I, I'm not trying to, you know, bust anybody's chops or anything like that. You asked me a question. That's, that's how I'm going to answer it. But, uh, man, I'm very confident in myself. I think those guys are confident in themselves too. They'd probably answer the question the exact same way. So <laughs> I don't no, think they'd expect anything less. That's granted. I got two more questions for you. One is that one championship is signing a lot of world champion caliber grapplers into one championship. Now you're Yuri Samos, 
Marcus Bocetcha. What's your stance on that? You you excited and you're happy about more grapplers transitioning into mixed martial arts? Absolutely, man. I, I, I really love, uh, you know, the progression of our sport and, and guys in our sport transitioning into mixed martial arts. Cause you know, I think a lot of guys that like start doing jujitsu, like that's uh, in the back of their mind. It was in the back of my mind when I started doing jujitsu. It's like, Oh man, I really want to, you know, where does this all fit in in the context of fighting? How am I going to use jujitsu in an actual fight? And like, you know, your students want to know those sorts of things because they're, you know, I, I teach, you know, guys jujitsu. So they want to know those sorts of things, you know, because they're interested in self-defense. And I think it's all very relevant. Um, one thing that I will say about these guys that are transitioning into uh, mixed martial arts, it's like, I'm, I'm happy that they're doing it, but what I really want anybody that's trying to do that to do is just do their due diligence and like, take it very seriously, you know? Um, and I, I don't, I don't mean that in like a, a degrading way. I'm not saying that, like, I think anybody for the most part that fights takes it seriously. But what I mean by that is like, really do your homework. Like if you're going to get out here and fight, like, don't just go, oh, man, I'm really good at jujitsu. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm going to hit the pads a little bit, you know, here and there. I'm going to go to a boxing coach, and then I'm going to get out there and fight. Uh, man, are you going to win some fights? I'm, I'm sure you will. But, dude, you can do so much better than that. Like, look at some of the guys that have integrated grappling uh, into mixed martial arts and try to learn from those guys and really study them. Um, because what I don't like to see is I don't like to see guys try to transition from jujitsu and clearly they don't understand the integration and the difference between using jujitsu in, in a fight and using jujitsu just in a pure jujitsu match. And, you know, I hate to see somebody who has, has all the, the talent, all of the potential to be great in mixed martial arts, just come out here and not show it because they haven't filled in those gaps. They haven't learned how to integrate their skills and they just kind of expected like, Oh, well, I'm great at jujitsu and I'm going to learn like a little bit of, you know, punching, punching the bag and punching the mitts and, you know, I'm going to do okay out there. You know, it's so much more than that. Like spend some time learning how to shoot box, spend some time learning how to fence wrestle, like do your homework. And, uh, you're going to have so, so much better uh, of a chance out here. It's so much better of a time and so much longer of a career. And I, I, that's, that's what I want from these guys, but I'm excited to have more rappers, you know, in MMA overall. That was, that's the easy answer to your question. Now you've had a long night. we got one more question for you. No Thank you so much for your time. No worries. This one's from Nick of South China Morning Post. Can you explain your promo after the fight? <laughs> yeah, I can. I can. Um, so uh, I'm, I'm a big fan. This is this is a like kind of older movie and like older little like short story tale that was told. But uh, Beowulf was uh, was a cool little story that I read when I was a Great kid story. in school. And, uh, and then they made a movie out of it, which is a little different than what was actually like, uh, written down. But, uh, anyway, that was like one of the quotes. Uh, I don't know if it's also in, I'm assuming it's in both the book and the, uh, and the movie, but I just thought it was like a really cool quote. So I was like, yeah, this is, this sounds like a great thing to say after a fight. So I just tossed that in there. And then obviously the call out at the end, I just wanted to call out Don Lee cause I want that title. But, uh, I thought it was a cool thing to toss that Beowulf quote in there. I think that, uh, I think it's just like a, a really exciting, like badass thing to say. So, <laughs> All right, man, I, I'd have to agree with you. Thank you so much for your time, man. Congratulations again on that victory. And hopefully the next fight will be the one against Todd Lee. All right, let's do it.